Hi everyone, and welcome to a video on how to turn a photo into comic book art. In this lesson, we'll learn step by step the basics of how to create this type of image using filters and textures and all the necessary steps along the way. So to get started, first let's download all the assets needed for the tutorial. So we'll need a stock photo or image. We'll just use this one here from Pixabay but feel free to use your own photos to follow along. We'll also need an old paper texture. So this one here is from DeviantArt. And we'll also need BD Cartoon Shout, which is a font from dafont.com. So once you've downloaded all those assets, let's start by creating a sunburst background. So to do this, let's create a new file in Photoshop by going to File and New. And then we want to choose the appropriate size for your image. So for this tutorial, we'll use the size 850 by 645 pixels and then click OK. And now we want to make a new layer called Sunburst Background. So let's go ahead and create a new layer here so click on the new layer button and let's rename this sunburst background and now we want to pick the gradient tool so let's go over to the fill tool here and we want to make sure we select the gradient tool by clicking and holding down on the left mouse button here and then selecting gradient tool like so and then if we scroll over to the top here, we want to click on the gradient here to edit it. And now we can choose two colors for our gradient. So if we just click on these small little color stops here at the bottom, we can then select a color which we can use. So let's go ahead and select a color here. So for the first color, I'm just going to use this color code. So that's seven all the way through like so and for our second color code we're going to use C5 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 like so so now we've got a dark gray moving on to a light gray once you've done that click OK and to apply our gradient we're going to move our mouse from the bottom holding the shift key on the keyboard and drawing a vertical line up like so. Cool. Now that you've created a linear vertical gradient for your background, we're now going to add some filters to it. So let's go to filter and then go to distort and then select wave. And in the setting windows here, let's go ahead and edit the following. So for the number of generators, we're going to keep it at five and then a minimum wavelength of 28 and a maximum of 29. The minimum amplitude, we'll put it at 998 and the maximum amplitude, we'll put it at 999. And then we'll keep the scale at 100% ver vertical and 100% horizontal, like so. Once you've done that, click OK. And now you'll see that we've created some vertical lines with a light, uh, a light line and a dark gray line. Now go to image and we want to use trim and then just leave the settings here to click OK just so that we can make it so that the far left and the far right sides of our image are both light gray. Now we want to go to Filter, Distort, and let's choose Polar Coordinates. And now you'll see that in this little viewfinder here, we can create a sunburst. So let's go ahead and adjust our sunburst like so using these two scroll bars. Just making sure that it's in the middle. And then once you're happy with that, click OK. Great. Now let's go ahead and add some color to our sunburst. To do this, go to Layer, 
then go to new adjustment layer and we want to add a gradient map like so so click on gradient map and this will add some color to our sunburst background so let's call this color like so and for this tutorial we're just going to use some set colors here so you'll see in the properties window here we can choose some colors for our gradient map so click on this and we're just going to choose some colors so click on this color stop here and the first color we're going to use is 003876 which is a dark blue and then click OK and this will be at location of 23% and then for our second color we're going to click on the second color stop here and we're going to use a color code 00B5 E9 like so which is a light blue and that will be at a location of 100% once you've done that click OK and you'll see now we've got a nice blue sunburst background now let's go ahead and open up our photo now to do this we can simply click and drag our photo from the desktop or the location on your computer into Photoshop like so and over here what we're going to do is we're just going to enlarge it slightly and then once you're happy with the size of your photograph just simply click on the check mark icon here to confirm it excellent now I've just noticed that this foot has been cut off on the right here so you might want to make sure that the image is a little bit larger before clicking on the confirm button like so cool and then once you've done that we'll need to use the lasso tool over here and we're just going to zoom into our image here and we want to sort of mask around the image like so until you have cut out the entire image from its background now this might take a little bit of time so what I've done is I've already cut out this image here on a separate layer so once you've done that you should have something like this excellent from here we can now add some slight adjustments to the photo by adding a brightness contrast adjustment layer so let's go ahead and do that by clicking on this adjustment layer icon here and we want to select brightness contrast like so and here we can adjust these values over here so I'm just going to brighten up the, con the brightness a little bit and add some more contrast in fact it's a little bit too bright so let's go ahead and move this down slightly like so excellent and we can also add a vibrant adjustment layer as well so let's go back to the layers panel go back to this button here and we want to select vibrance and here we can crank up the vibrance just to add a little bit more color to our image and we can also add more saturation as well now to add the poster edges so for this let's go ahead and press Control J to make a copy of our couple layer so make sure that you've actually selected the correct layer so I've just made a copy of our vibrance list. Let's go ahead and delete that and select the correct layer here. So let's go ahead and rename this couple. Let's go ahead and delete the previous one. So you should have something like this in your layers panel. So select couple, press Control J to duplicate that. And let's go ahead and call this comic effect. And now we want to go to filter, go to filter gallery, which will bring up this new window here. And we want to go to artistic in the artistics folder. And we want to search for poster edges like so. And once you've selected poster edges, you'll see how your image will start to look like in this little viewfinder window here. Now we want to change the settings a little bit here. So let's go ahead and make the edge thickness to zero 
and we want to change the intensity to 10 and keep the posterization at 2 like so. Once you've done that click OK and this will apply the, the effect to your comic effect layer. Now we want to add a stroke layer style to this so go ahead and right click this layer go to blending options and now we want to select stroke like so and we want to change the size of the stroke to 3 and we want to change the color to black like so. Excellent. Now you might also want to change the position from inside to outside depending on your preference. Once you've done that go ahead and click OK and now we want to add a photocopy filter to the image. So let's go ahead and select the couple layer again and press Control J to duplicate this layer and we want to call this layer outline effect like so move this layer above the comic effect layer and we want to set this blend mode to multiply so go ahead to the drop down menu here and we want to go ahead and select multiply like so. Now we want to make sure that we set the foreground color and the background color here so let's go ahead and double click on this and make sure that the foreground color is set to pure black which is zero and the background color we want to set it to pure white which is F. Click OK and now we want to go to filter go to filter gallery and let's go ahead and select sketch here and now we want to select photocopy like so now from here we want to change some of the settings so let's go ahead and make the detail 2 and set the darkness to 50 like so and once you've done that click OK excellent so now we've got a nice outline effect here and a nice comic effect in these two layers. Awesome! Now to create the halftone effect. So let's go ahead and create a new layer here and let's rename this halftone texture and from here we want to fill this with white. So let's select a white color here and select the paint bucket tool and fill it with white like so and now go to filter noise add noise and from here we want to create a good amount of noise like so so maybe about a hundred percent and then click OK and now go to filter and we want to go to pixelate and choose color halftone like so and we want to create a max radius of 4 and then change the channels to 45 for all four channels and then click OK. Excellent! Now all we have to do is make sure that halftone texture layer is selected and we want to set the blend mode to multiply and an opacity of around 65% like so. Cool. Now we can also add a, another brightness and contrast effect layer up here and Let's go ahead and adjust the brightness a little bit, like so. Just to lighten the image up a little bit and to make it brighter. Now let's go ahead and create the speech bubbles. So for this we want to use the ellipse tool. So let's make sure that we've selected the ellipse tool here. So click and hold the left mouse button and select the ellipse tool. Make sure that you've got a white color selected. Uh, up here so let's go to fill select a white color 
and for the stroke we don't need any stroke at the moment so let's go ahead and make sure that we've selected no color for that like so we want to add some small circles for the thought bubble so let's go ahead and create a circle here like so and some small little bubbles for the thought bubble and another speech bubble up here like so cool so we can also move these bubbles around just to adjust them slightly and then once you're happy with that let's go ahead and in fact first of all we need to make a little speech bubble here so let's use the pen tool for this and let's create a little speech bubble here like so and then once you've done that select all of the shape layers here right click and let's merge all the shapes and all we have to do here is right click select blending options and we want to add a stroke to all of these so just click on the stroke a size of three pixels and a black color and then click OK awesome now we can also add some text to these speech bubbles so let's create a new layer for this click on the text tool here and let's go ahead and add some sample text here so just simply click on the layer like so type in whatever text you want from here and we wanted to use the font that we downloaded which was BD cartoon so make sure that you've selected BD cartoon like so and apply it to the text let's go ahead and do that and we can do exactly the same for the other speech bubble as well so let's go ahead and duplicate that text layer and add it over here excellent now to finish off the layer we can also add a grungy texture effect on top of the image so let's go ahead and select our grungy paper effect and click and drag it into our uh, our image like so let's go ahead and right click and rotate it 90 degrees and we're just going to fill the image with this effect and then click on the check mark button once you're happy with that and from here we want to make the blend mode overlay and we can also adjust the opacity to your liking so I'm just going to make an opacity of about 40% like so excellent and then once you're that you can also add a black border around our image as well so to do this we want to press shift control alt and e all at the same time and this will create a copy of all the layers that we have in our image and then from here make sure that it's at the top of our layers right click click on blending options select stroke and we want to position our stroke inside this time and here we can increase the size of our border to about let's say six like so and once you're happy with that click OK excellent and that's it for this tutorial have fun creating your own comic images and I'll see you next time on Tuts Plus